Hi there. It's great to see you. Thanks for stopping by today. I really appreciate it. I'm John Merriman, and this is your Tuesday morning guitar song. Back in the 1960s, a large group of the American youth were growing up in a society and a culture in which they felt totally disenfranchised. The times were changing so quickly back then that at an early age, they had already grown far beyond their parents' paradigm of the world. They saw the world totally differently and they wanted change. Now, I hate to deal in stereotypes, but for me, it's convenient to group the main participants of the countercultural movement back then into a few main groupings, okay? So on one side of the spectrum were the hippies. And the hippies were the kids who just wanted to drop out. They saw no value in the current culture and society. They just wanted to do their own thing. Alternative lifestyles, utopian lifestyles, peace and love was their creed, drugs were a big part. But by and large, they just wanted to be left alone. Now, on the other side of the spectrum were the radical political youth who were out there ripping up the place. They believed that to change the world, you had to destroy the old world and build a new one in their place. And it was the radical political organizations like the Yippies, the Youth International Party, uh, the SDS, the Weathermen, or the Weather Underground. Now, in the middle, balancing out all this craziness, were the Folkies. And the Folkies were the kids who thought you could shine light upon or raise consciousness about the evils of the world through your music, through your folk music, and through your protest songs. And they provided a great deal of the soundtrack for the 1960s. Now, historians called the folk movement of the 1960s the folk revival movement. And that's because the American folk slash protest movement really started back in the 1920s and the 1930s with the Dust Bowl and the Great Depression. And of course, that was a time American society also needed great change, like the 1960s. Now, back then, there were two men who formed the pillars, and they were the founders of the American protest folk movement. They were Pete Seeger and Woody Guthrie. Now, Pete here was a highly educated Easterner. He was from New York, and he wrote such great songs as If I Had a Hammer, Turn, 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 or uh, Where Have All the Flowers Gone? Woody here, uh, Woody was a common guy from Oklahoma, and like many, he was pushed out of Oklahoma by the Dust Bowl. He had to travel to uh, California to find work with thousands of other people, and he traveled the country writing some of the greatest protest songs of that era including one of the greatest songs ever, which is, This Land is Your Land. So, now, the musicians of the 1960s, the folk musicians, Bob Dylan and Joan Baez and all those guys, rediscovered their work, and that's why the folk movement of the 1960s is called the Folk Revival Movement. Let's take a look at Woody Guthrie. Woody Guthrie was known as the Oklahoma Cowboy. He did travel the country singing his protest songs, and he finally settled in New York City, where he married a woman by the name of Marjorie Mazia. They had four children, two sons and two daughters. The two sons became folk singers, and the most famous one of those two, of course, was Arlo Guthrie. And Arlo was born in 1947 in Brooklyn, and he took a very keen interest in his father's folk and protest songs at an early age. And by 13 years old, he was already professionally performing on the folk circuit around New York City with some of the greatest folk names of that day. But he was always being billed as Arlo Woody's son, Guthrie. He was always following in the shadow of his father. But then he finally came of age when he wrote his 18-minute masterpiece, Alice's Restaurant Massacre. It was an 18-minute song. It was a spoken word song with a sung chorus that told a true story about how when Arlo got a littering ticket when he lived in Massachusetts. Now this littering ticket followed him all the way to his draft board induction. 
and he was thrown out of the draft because he had a criminal record with this littering ticket. It was absurd, it was fun, and it had a great anti-war message. And it became an icon of the 1960s folk slash protest hippie movement and made Arlo famous all by himself, divorced from his father. And then in 1969, Alice's Restaurant was made into a movie with Arlo acting in it. Now, the song Alice's Restaurant was 18 minutes long. It was much too long for a single, but it appeared on his first debut album, and that album went to number 17 on the Billboard charts, which was incredibly popular for a folk music musician of that day. So in 69, the movie was made, and then 1970, Arlo was, had a main feature in the movie Woodstock, where he sang his famous song, Coming into Los Angeles, because Arlo did perform at the Woodstock Music Festival. Later on in the 1970s, Arlo's star did fade a bit, but he still tours and records actively today. He lives in Massachusetts. He was married for many years, but unfortunately his wife died a few years ago of cancer. He has four wonderful children. All of them have become folk singers. In fact, his daughter Kathy sings in a band with Amy Nelson, and that's Willie Nelson's daughter. So he was quite a character and an icon of the 1960s. We'll never forget Arlo Guthrie. And today, he is the topic of your Tuesday morning fun fact. Here's your Tuesday morning fun fact. Arlo Guthrie, of course, is the son of a very famous man, Woody Guthrie. Arlo also has other very famous people in his family. His mother, Marjorie Mazia, in her day was a very famous dancer with the Martha Graham dance troupe in New York. And her mother, Arlo's grandmother on that side, is the most famous Yiddish female poet ever. Her name is Eliza Greenblatt. She has written five volumes of poetry and an autobiography. Her poems have traveled all over the world and have been put to music by the most famous Jewish composers. So to many, Arlo is the son of Woody Guthrie. But also to many, he is the grandson of Eliza Greenblatt. People, it's all in your point of view. And that's your Tuesday morning fun fact. Let's go back to the early 70s. This was Arlo's biggest top 40 hit. It wasn't a protest song. It was a train song, my favorite train song. So please don't go away. I'll be right back.
Thank you so much for stopping in today. It's always such a joy to hang out together. I just love it and always look forward to it every week. Hope to see you again in the future. And if you have a second, please hit the like button. If you know somebody who likes a little music history with their guitar songs, send them this video or please share it on your social media. See you next week. And remember, you're never ready for your day without a song in your heart. Bye now.